In this lesson, we're going to prepare a simple character for animation. Open the Character 1 folder. Here you can find an image of our character. The simplest way to create animation is to cut the character into pieces and reassemble them together in Synfig Studio. So we get something like a paper doll. You can use any image editor to cut the character. GIMP or Krita will fit very well for this task. They are both free software, so you can download and use them at no cost. When cutting your image into pieces, make sure they have some intersecting areas around the joints, like in a real-world paper doll. Actually, you can also cut your image right in Synfig, but that's a topic for another time. Right now, our main goal is to learn how to construct the character, so I won't focus on the cutting process now. In the Character 1 folder, you will find pre-cut pieces to work with. Here we've got a body, an arm, a head, and a leg. One arm and one leg will do because they can be mirrored. Note that each image must have a transparent background. That's why all of them are saved in ping format. So let's start. Choose File, Import. Find the location of the sample files, go to the Character 1 folder, and import the first file. By the way, Windows and Linux users can import images by dragging them from the file manager right into the working area. This way you can select multiple files at once and add them all. So here we have all parts. We need to change their size to fit the screen. Of course, we can scale each piece one by one, but there is a better way to do that. In Synfig Studio, we can group several layers together and transform them as a single object. Let's select the layers we want to group. You can select multiple layers by holding the Control key, or you can select several layers in a row by holding the Shift key. Now click this button. Much the same as an image layer, the group has handles to control its transformation. Now let's put all the parts in their places. It's better to drop them aside first like this, and then put them back together. Here we need to change the order of the layers. Now I'm going to show how to create a mirrored copy of the arm. First, let's select the arm group and duplicate it. To duplicate a group, press this button or right-click on the layer and choose Duplicate Layer from the menu. So here's an arm. Now we need to mirror it. Just drag this handle to the opposite side, like this. When dragging the handle, try to place it the same distance from the center point. Otherwise, the proportions will be distorted. It's not 100% accurate, but in this case, it would not be noticeable. But if you want perfect accuracy, then you can mirror by editing transformation values manually. Let's give it a try for the leg. In the Parameters tab, find the Transformation parameter and expand it. Here you will see a list of transformations available for the image layer. We need to edit the Scale subparameter. To mirror the leg along the horizontal axis, we have to precede the x-axis value with the minus sign. Press Enter twice. Now the leg has been mirrored proportionally. Great! The character is now fully composed. Let's try to change his pose. For example, raise his arm. As you see, it rips out of his body and you need to adjust it manually. 
We can fix this behavior by changing the rotation center of the arm. Click on the green handle, then hold the control key down and drag it here. Now the center is in the right place so you can move the arm without any problems. Now let's adjust rotation centers for the remaining parts. It would be nice if our character could rotate his body. If we rotate the body now, the head and arms will stay in their initial places, which is obviously a flaw. All the parts should move as a whole. The solution is easy. You just need to group the arms, head, and body. Select the layers. Now select the group and move the rotation center. So everything works now. To keep things in order, we'll call this group Boy, and this one Body. And there's one last thing to mention. Let's click aside to clear the selection, and then click any part of the character that belongs to the body group. Note that when you clicked, it's the group content that is selected, but not the group itself. That's not always desirable. Sometimes we want the group to be selected when we click at any part of it on the work area. That's why each group has a special parameter called Lock Selection. If we turn it on, then clicking on any part of the group will select the group itself. Like this. At the same time, we can still select any element of the group by expanding it in the Layers panel. Right now we don't need lock selection of the body group, so let's turn it off. So our character is ready. Let's save our file.